You've probably heard the old saying, health is wealth. Good health is, well, it's the key to everything. That's why there are so many healthcare modalities to try and cure what ails you. Everything from surgery, medications, MRIs, x-rays, to vitamins, herbs, acupuncture, and physical therapy, the list goes on. Well, some doctors are now adding stem cell therapy to that list. And while the early stages of stem cell research began a few decades ago, more and more scientists these days are advocating for stem cells as a potential future of preventive and therapeutic medicine. So we decided to identify a leading expert in this field. That led us to Dr. Hans Kirsted, one of the world's most renowned stem cell researchers specializing in therapy development for various cancers and immune disorders. A professor of anatomy and neurobiology, Dr. Kirsted in the early 2000s founded and directed the Sue and Bill Gross Stem Cell Research Center at the University of California, Irvine. During his 15-year tenure with UCI, Kirsted helped facilitate tens of millions of dollars to promote cutting-edge stem cell research, the mentoring of hundreds of students, all the while being granted over 20 patents for his work. Discover Magazine named Dr. Kirsted one of the top 100 scientists of the year. Kirsted was a founding advisor of the California Stem Cell Initiative, resulting in an $8.5 billion stem cell fund. Today, Dr. Kirsted is the CEO of Avita Biomedical in Irvine, California. After vetting his credentials, of which there are many, we traveled to the city of Irvine to meet with Dr. Hans Kirsted. The focus of my interview, how stem cells could help with cancer and the aging process. I've read so much, I've heard so much about stem cells, the cutting edge, the future of healthcare. Why is that the case and what are you researching? We've never known as humans a biologic that is more powerful than a stem cell. It's the only biologic that has irrefutably the potential to treat every single human disease because you're made from them. Every organ in your body, every tissue, every cell you have came from a stem cell. So if we can take a stem cell and make it into eye or heart or gut or skin, liver, et cetera, which we can, then we should be able to use those things as models of disease and we should be able to use them as therapies. Give some examples of what stem cells are used for in treating illness and then what you're doing here specifically. Probably the greatest success in stem cells are um, blood transfusions for uh, bone and blood cancers where someone's full body radiation is preceded by an extract of stem cells from their bone marrow. That's where all your blood comes from, all of your immune cells. So you don't wanna kill those with the radiation, you wanna kill the cancer with the radiation. So when one has blood cancers, you generally undergo a whole body radiation which would otherwise kill you. But prior to that, some stem cells get taken out of the bone marrow patient is irradiated, and then those get put back in to reconstitute their immune system so they don't die. That's been going on for a few decades now, extremely successfully. The advances in stem cells besides that have been fewer, but the potential is still there. It's still a fairly early stage in the stem cell field, but we are seeing phenomenal phenomenal preclinical and now clinical evidence that these things can work in various disease states. And is that what you're doing here at your clinic, your lab here in Irvine, California? I like to be on the edge of new therapies. So when I look at a sector like cancer and I see the drugs that have been developed, you know, largely they're what I call two by four medicine, whack someone over the head with a two by four and hope it has an effect. Chemotherapy is a brutal, brutal drug. People who go through it have a common saying that I survived chemo rather than cancer. And whole body irradiation, pointed irradiation. We're getting better, the field is, with new immunomodulatories, immunotherapies like checkpoint inhibitors, the latest standard of care that's been introduced in cancer. But the efficacy is low. Side effects are there. They might keep you alive for a couple more years, but they're not doing the full job. So I like to look at these big, big issues and how can, how can we apply stem cell therapies to them? If stem cells, as you say, have been around for a while, 
Uh, why is it we don't hear more about the success of stem cells or the stem cell research itself? Because you're talking about cancer. Every time I speak with someone who has or has had cancer, like, well, as you say, I've been through chemo, I've been through radiation, or the surgeons cut the tumor mm -hmm. out. Why is that all we hear then? Stem cell technologies have one great challenge, and my laboratory was the first in the world to overcome that challenge. That challenge is to take a stem cell and make it into something useful. So let's simplify, or in my case, oversimplify it. Unfortunately, no one's gonna accuse me of being a researcher or a scientist <laughs> or a doctor. The IQ wasn't there. Uh, with that said, give me an example of what type of cancer a stem cell could help, and then how is a cancer, uh, how is a stem cell extracted? Where's the stem cell placed? Uh, for someone who knows nothing about this, take me through it step by step. Okay, so every single cancer, every one, not a hypothesis, this is a fact, this is probably the greatest discovery that's ever been made in the cancer field and the discovery that got my attention. Every cancer comes from a tumor initiating cell or a cancer stem cell. It's just two phrases for the same word. So a tumor, some bulk tumor, is only 1% cancer stem cell and 99% stuff. The cancer stem cell makes the tumor. The tumor is you. It's your own hair, gut, skin, cartilage. Yes, all slightly mutated, cancerous, but it looks like you. That's why your own body has such a hard time attacking and getting rid of it, because it sees self. But the ticks, the tumor initiating cells, they are stem cells, and they birth the whole tumor. They are also the thing that leaves the tumor runs through the blood and makes another tumor. That's metastasis. They are also the thing, perhaps most insidiously, that falls asleep in your large blood vessels or your bone marrow for years, two to seven years on average. They sit there quietly, a little stem cell, sitting in the side of a blood vessel for seven years. The patient may go through chemotherapy and irradiation, surgical resections, checkpoint inhibitors. They think they're all clean and clear, and then two to seven years later, they get cancer again. That is known to be because of this cancer stem cell that wakes up, drops more daughters, some become sleepers, some become cancers. So what we did was take a technology that our group had developed, frankly, years ago, in making something pure, taking a stem cell and being able to amplify it and make it a pure product. So we take a little piece of the surgical resection. When someone has cancer, they're getting things chopped out of them. We take a little cubic millimeter or a cubic centimeter, whatever we get, and we pull out that 1%, 1 in 100 cells that are tumor initiating cells or cancer stem cells. And we know how to grow stem cells. And so we purify them, we amplify them, and then we train the patient's immune system to kill them. Where do you get the stem cells from? I know back in the day, uh, several years ago, there was a lot of controversy surrounding the origination of where uh, you get the stem cells from. That controversy, you're absolutely right, was set the field back a lot. The, the populace thought that stem cells were procured from aborted human fetuses, which they're not. Mm -hmm. They can be. I've certainly never procure them from that way and I don't think anyone who really wants to make a true drug would do that because it happens to be illegal for you to make money using aborted human fetal tissue. So just for that reason alone, let alone the ethics and the whole supply chain of getting it. So that uh, was a trouble for the stem cell field because people thought that we were getting stem cells from aborted tissues. It was President Bush that actually tackled that quite successfully. He was with a population of about 85% of people that thought that that was the case. Stem cells are horrible. It's chopping up aborted fetuses at the back door of abortion clinics. And uh, they were wrong. What he did was allowed the field to go forward with a small set of stem cell lines that actually were not procured from that tissue type. They were procured from the discard of fertility clinics. That's state sanctioned, that's federally sanctioned work that's helped a lot of people have babies. And the, the leftovers from the um, fertility process are used to get stem cells. Now, there's even a more modern version where we can take your skin, a little, little tiny punch biopsy of your skin, 
no scars, hardly painful like a needle prick, and then make stem cells from the skin. Reverse them back into a stem cell state and use that as a starting population. In the case of cancer, we actually get them from the tumor. We pull them out of the cancer patient, sort them, amplify them, teach the immune system how to kill them. If this is the next best thing, Dr. Kier said, why aren't more physicians using this modality, so to speak, and why aren't we hearing more of it in the mainstream? Stem cell technologies using these more recent means of developing stem cells are few, and they are working their way through the clinics. You know, I run a couple of companies that are working through clinical trials, some almost commercial now, like our cancer treatment, just getting commercial, our pathogen treatment for infectious diseases, and another one on anti-aging and longevity, an immune modulator that's in the first stages of human clinical trials. That's very exemplary of where the stem cell field is. It's, it's part way through to commercialization in the United States. How, what we see as a problem of that is that the inpatient patient population, can't blame them, are going offshore. The inpatient entrepreneurs, we can blame them, are taking non-FDA approved drugs to Mexico, to Russia, to various places around the world and administering them to humans without the safety and efficacy checks that usually precede a treatment. What are the cancers that your stem cells treat? At Avita Biomedical, we have shown that our stem cell treatments for cancer are working in glioblastoma, brain cancer, melanoma, ovarian cancer, liver and kidney cancers. I hear a lot these days about a possible cancer vaccine. Are you any part of this equation? I am working with the White House's Moonshot program and um, we see that, yes, the focus is quite heavily on vaccines for cancer. Let's get away from the cancer discussion because there's another health topic that seems to be so prevalent for everybody today, and that's longevity or staying healthy or staying young. How do stem cells play into that dynamic? You know, as a stem cell scientist, um, I've been pulled into many, many different fields because stem cells can affect every disease state. And I think the most intriguing that I've been pulled into recently is the longevity field. Every manifestation of aging, every one of them, requires a defunct deficit, crapping out immune system. Every one of us is at our immune peak when we're 27 years old, and then it's downhill. We birth our immune system less frequently, and it gets old and tired. When you're birthing your immune system frequently, those youngsters, those young immune system cells secrete about 400 different factors that keep your immune system alive and healthy. Well, we've actually figured out how to make that soup, that secretome, that set of secretions that are, that are keeping your immune system healthy. So at Immunist Biomedical, a company that I chair here in Irvine, California, we have taken human stem cells and for the first time in the world, made them into a particular population of human cells and farm them by the billions in dishes. And they secrete every factor relevant to human immune system development and health. It's, it's one of the funnest projects I've ever been involved in because every manifestation of aging is due to a decline of the immune system. And here we have now the soup, the 440 factors that are responsible for immune system health and we can make those for very little money. It's off the shelf. And when given to most models of aged, um, of aging for various manifestations of aging, we have shown that we can prevent manifestations of aging in every model we've tried. We can halt or reverse muscle atrophy, arterial stiffness, brain inflammation, the actual decline of the immune system function itself. And here's a big one, metabolism. The slowing of metabolism is an immune mediated event that we can reverse in animals. And Immunist Biomedical has recently been approved by the United States FDA to work on humans, and we have begun that. And I can tell you that the, 
the first humans are hitting the primary outcome measures of the clinical trial. It seems almost surreal. It's like something out of a Twilight Zone episode <laughs> or a sci-fi novel, right? Stay young forever. I mean, that's here now, so to speak, is it not? Well, we certainly have a pathway to it. Aren't stem cells used in the field of orthopedics? I know so many athletes who tell me, hey, I'm going in for a stem cell therapy. They've got a bone-on-bone -bone knee or a bone-on-bone or -bone hip or some sort of a sports injury. Stem cells have been shown to be very, very efficacious in calming down hurts and pains around the knees, uh, shoulders, wherever you have them, really. Uh, even some arthritis as well, showing very nice results. It is a burgeoning sector, and I have to say that probably seven out of 10 of the places that are saying they're doing it aren't really doing stem cell therapies, so you've gotta be very careful. You know, over the last few years, the United States FDA has put out hundreds of cease and desist letters to doctors who are doing this work because they're not doing it through the FDA. So it is important for people to actually, that are considering this, to surf Google, the name of the doctor. You can put in Dr. Kirstead and then say FDA cease and desist letter. And fortunately, you will not see a cease and desist letter beside my name. But that's a good check that the FDA is actually policing this and trying to shut down the charlatans. So who's the champion and who's the charlatan? Unfortunately, it's up to the patient to figure it out, but the work is real. There is some really, really good data coming out of sports injury, uh, orthopedic surgery, just athletic um, work showing that stem cells have a tremendous effect in calming down inflammation around a hurt joint. You really believe, Dr. Kier said that stem cells are our health future, correct? Yes, I do. I've never seen a biologic that has greater potential than stem cells, and I've devoted my career to it as a result.